Welcome everyone to the Drawn Out Conference. Um, this has been a series of talks about art and drawing, how artists use drawing to break through creative ruts, created by Keith Allen Spencer at Denison University. Today's episode is hosted by DePaul University and the Peeler Art Center. I'm tonight's host, John Barry. If you'd like to learn more about my own studio practice, you can, and you're in Greencastle, you can attend our faculty feature on October 26th at 7 p.m. in the auditorium, one floor below our studio. Joining us today in the studio, literally my painting studio, is Mad Green and Emily Graves. Two of our Ephraimson Fellows. Uh, the Ephraimson Fellowship is a prestigious award for graduates of our program to focus on their studio practice. Welcome to both. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'll introduce Emily first. From the Hoosier State, painter, potster, manipulator, and Ephraimson Verger Fellow, Emily Griggs. I'm a digital. <laughs> Applause, but I didn't laugh anyway. Um, uh, Mad Green, Chihuahua connoisseur, brown belt in Kempo karate, painter and sculptor, uh, born and raised, I think you said South St. Louis. Just do the laugh one. I'll do it this laugh one. <laughs> so we all use drawing, but um, you know, we talked a little bit about feeling some imposter syndrome, but I'd like to work out the kinks here by uh, doing starting off our evening with a one minute drawing exercise. So Matt, if you can do the honors, reaching behind the couch. Um, we're going to start with drawing clockwise each other with our uh, weapon of choice. Matt, you picked a pencil. Emily, you picked a marker. marker. So I'm doing you, drawing you. Yep, You're drawing I'm drawing me. Okay. And um, we're going to contribute to this image wall here. One minute, starting when the music begins. I'm uh, a little nervous. Also, make sure that uh, based on the hanging, that it will be the orientation that you want. Okay. okay? I'm very sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I don't know where this human thing is. We're both like a minute into the not being able to hang it up. I used to be, yeah, there you go. I got it. I didn't think about this. There we go. Uh, that definitely gets. <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, that's not bad. That's not bad. Um, Why do I look like that? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. Apologies. 
Well, sorry for everyone at home who had to watch that. Um, judging from, I can see the uh, studio camera view here. You can probably barely make these out. What we'll do is we'll bring the camera up towards the end of the show. Um, but moving on, the topic of drawing, um, what I'd like to ask our guests first is a pretty general question open to either one of you is, how do you use drawing in your own studio practice? Near you. Well, I like to use drawing as a blueprint, not necessarily always on paper, almost exclusively not on paper. Um, I draw out an image before I start painting it on the canvas itself. How about yourself? I use drawing as a way of just keep fleshing out an idea whenever I have it. So like if I'm at work, I'll like open my little server's book and draw in my receipt. Um, but for me, it's kind of like this moment of not worrying about the flaws and just making something for yourself right whenever you feel it. So, Mad, would you say that your approach is in order to lower the stakes in order to investigate something? Yeah, it's definitely like, let's make this really shit thing to make a mm -hmm. really better thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Compost for something good. Exactly. Okay. And Emily, it sounds like your approach is to, is almost like antenna. Oh, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Where it seems like you have an idea for a painting, but in order to build that, you need some scaffolding first. Yeah, uh, hmm. scaffolding is a really good way to word it. I definitely, I have an image in my head and in order for me to build on top of, or build in the first place, I have to have sort of a skeleton first. Hmm. So do you find that, how often does the painting change from the skeleton? Always, always. So the drawing in a sense gets, the farther, the more time you spend on the work, the more the drawing becomes farther in the rear view mirror. Yes. Hmm. And Matt, is there ever a point where the low stakes thing becomes the thing and doesn't transform? Yeah, I I like to act like drawings sometimes are a finished piece to me, but in my head, they don't fit in this world of art the same way a painting does. So I don't know, I wouldn't necessarily like submit a drawing to an exhibition unless I spent a ton of time with it. You wouldn't submit that? Masterpiece? I, I guess it's submitted here. Right. <laughs> but I don't know. For me, drawing is always just like the start of my idea. But I do go back to it in my painting. Like I would say some of my paintings are drawings as well. It sounds like Does there's, that a, answer the, your question? there's a value yeah. rubric that seems to shift yeah. between what you're calling forms that more easily fit into the art world or the shows that you might be applying to mm -hmm. and the drawings again. So maybe there's this, um, in order for that low stakes mental maneuver to work, you have to believe that drawing is low stakes. Exactly. Hmm. Very interesting. Um, so one thing I wanted to ask you um, is, how did you get to where you're, or how did you get to what you're making now? Sort of on, on what, on whose shoulders are you standing artistically? Or are there any, simple way to put it is, are there any artistic shout outs you want to make? Um, I always come back to this artist. Sarah Lucas has always been um, someone I idolize. <laughs> um, recently, I've been looking at Raymond Pettibon's drawings um, and they're insane, very, most of them are beyond me even, uh, which I think is a good thing. Well, what, what part do you feel like is beyond you? Um, I think that like conjoining like scripture or poetry with the drawing itself is... The textural use. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they create um, certainly another layer and sometimes a dissonant layer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are two good references. 
Uh, how about yourself? Um, for me, I feel like I'm most inspired by people that I like can actually work with. Um, so just a few amazing women I've gotten to work with at Peeler are like Lindsay Garcia taught my drawing class, you know, mm -hmm. and she is very much an outside of the box thinker. And it was a nice like look at what drawing can be. And then Drea Cofield and Lori Miles, just for like Lori just is all around good at everything I feel like and has taught me so much. And Drea has given me so many skills for painting. Yeah, all three of those are creative heavy hitters. Yeah. And a, and a, a, a good variety of skill sets too and what they can teach. Yep. Absolutely. You know, one thing, um, actually I forgot to show this in the beginning, but I'm gonna show this now is the, um, what I've put up on the screen here is a, uh, childhood drawing that Emily has done. So as we're looking about the, the shout outs, I have it here too. And um, Emily, do you remember how old you were when you made this? I'd say like around seven or eight, most likely. I can at least spell my own name. So describe for me the world that seven or eight year old Emily Graves is living in. Um, Chaotic, obviously, because I'm going to like elementary school and what elementary school isn't chaotic because everyone throws up <laughs> and like poops her pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, um, there's a lot of body horror. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also a, a happiness and peacefulness, mm -hmm. um, playfulness, uh, I think, and my twin sister won't be appreciative of this, I almost feel like it's a portrait of my twin sister. Oh. At the time. <laughs> and maybe currently. Lovingly. So. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Mad, let me navigate to yours. Your beautiful drawing, which uh oh, did I? There we go. Which I remember uh, responding most positively when you sent this to me. I love that ground, the work on the pathway to the left of the squirrels. I, that, that was immediately felt to me like tucking in a t-shirt into a belt. I loved that little moment. And the, um, you know, the meeting place of those two squirrels having a kind of conference, uh, conference. but uh, <laughs> are, so are, are you identifying here with the uh, squirrel on the tree? Are you one of these squirrels or none of them? And how old are you when you made You this? know, any answer I give you is, gonna, <laughs> is going to be a guess. Okay. Um, I, my mom tells me I was like seven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I know I spent a lot of time outside trying to draw like my yard, but my yard didn't look like that. So that's a lot of stuff being pulled out of probably books or cartoons. Oh, I can see that. The composition like a similar to a children's book. Yeah. Right. I, I love I like that. I mm -hmm. loved the narrow valley falling into the distance. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. And in some ways I might say um, both of these kids' drawings are better than what's on the wall. No I offense. absolutely mm -hmm. think they are. I think I, if I showed my own kids' drawings, it'd probably be the same. I'm embarrassed about this. <laughs> uh, so, how artists use drawing to break through creative ruts? What is a creative rut that you run into? COVID nineteen. That's a logistical one for sure. Yeah. Has, has drawing helped or has the, you talked about lowering stakes, right? Has lowering stakes helped? Maybe in a way that hasn't found form in drawing? I would say, yeah, but the only reason I like lowered my stakes necessarily is because of what happened. Like, so during the first like wave of quarantining, 
that was like months and stuff, you know, like I didn't make any art. All I did was draw, I, like right. not any like real art that I would consider like submitting anywhere. So like that way was taken off my shoulders, but I didn't choose it to be, you know. It's a good answer. Yeah. What's a creative rut, Emily, that you have uh, tried to fight through? And it doesn't, drawing doesn't need to have been the way to get out of it, how you've gotten out of it. Um, I think, I mean, I, I'm sort of going through a creative rut right now. <laughs> And um, I, I think- I have a sound for that? <laughs> Mario, how about that? It's a good space. I think it's always good to remember that it's a good space to be in, in a creative rut uh, because it's- Interesting. It, it means that you hit rock bottom and you can only go <laughs> up. You can only go up, <laughs> right? So mm -hmm. I found that a lot of creative ruts I mean, what spurs it for me is not having an idea behind what I'm doing, like a mm. solid something that I'm like really fucking passionate about. Mm -hmm. If I feel like I don't have something to say, then I feel like all of my work falls flat. And sometimes that means getting really aggressive with I've got jumbo crayons in my stu studio right now and just a huge piece of paper. And sometimes it's just about getting aggressive with something that you don't feel is going to cost you money, like canvas, mm -hmm. something that feels like I like I have to get this right the first time, basically. Right. Yeah, that's it. it there's been several times and it happens cyclically yeah um creative ruts and i've begun to see them as when you begin to recognize the structure you're trapped in and some of those structures have easy exits and they announce themselves and i think what you're describing is sometimes the structure has to be blown up or set fire to yeah sometimes yeah. it's just yep. stale chips you gotta throw out stale, yeah. stale chips you've got to throw out stale chips <laughs> or eat <laughs> Or eat if you had to. Yeah. Um, actually, that reminds me of the um, the little nook gallery space we have in the hallway. Yeah. Do you do you see how the floor is different over there? No. Look at the floor, and you'll notice a <laughs> pattern of uh, oil stain because at one point we had a student make a installation of uh, potato chips. This is before my time. Right. Which has now contributed a permanent drawing. Wow. Of stale potato chips. Love I that. think Lori would remember that. I see Lori she would. <laughs> Lori knows everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got a question from a listener. This one, let's see if I can find this. This one comes from Jeff Coons of uh, <laughs> York, Pennsylvania. York, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff, for the question. Um, this is what Jeff has to say. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> no, look, you know, Jeff says, I want to be a good artist, but I don't know where to start. Is drawing for me help? So Jeff's in a predicament. He sounds like he's in a creative run. I'm sorry, I hate this man so much. It's <laughs> so think, hard I to sit think, here. <laughs> I think Coons just wants to make money. Oh. Well, what if it's a different Jeff Koons? If it's a different Jeff Koons. Sorry to him. This right. Jeff, this is, this He's is in G a creative rut. This is G-E-O-F-F. -F yeah. Koons. Okay. With a Z. Um, I think With drawing's for everyone. I think all art is for everyone. But what, what would be a first assignment you'd give Jeff to start out? With drawing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd be like, go look in your living room, find an empty beer can, something yeah. and try and draw it and it'll probably look cool even if you fuck it up in the worst ways it'll probably look cool same just do it yeah you just gotta try it sounds like you've got a student i'll tell jeff to get in touch oh yes emily how about you what would you what assignment what would be assignment number one for mr coons hoping to become a great artist someday hoping to become a great artist right. i think especially as a man, especially as a white man, 
Stay at home. <laughs> I think Jeff should walk into his bathroom, <laughs> look at the most embarrassing thing in uh -huh. the bathroom, mm -hmm. and draw it to Ooh. take him down a few pegs. Ooh. I like that. You know, that actually might be in Jeff's oeuvre, as I, you know, in terms of. Um, mm, Although white men tend to have a way to leverage any of that to make more money yeah. than before. So, that is true. Um, if we're hoping to take that category of artists down a notch, we've been stubbornly, uh, <laughs> we've been stubborn in that regard. So let me take, who knows? So, oh, the most important thing, we've got another question from another listener of a, of a very different category here. Uh, Max Sakura. Oh. Sending him sending in a few uh, questions in California. Unable to join us, I These believe. These are going to be so hard. Hi, Max. <laughs> yeah. Mac, former Ephraimson uh, fellow. Is there anything that cannot be drawn? Mac wanted to know how conceptual she could get. Yeah. I said, go for it. Yeah. I knew this was going to be hard. I mean, I don't really think so. Even air, you can still draw air. So yeah, you mm -hmm. still don't know it'll be air. Atmosphere. Yeah. Is there anything? This is now I'm riffing. This isn't her question. Is there anything that shouldn't be drawn? Yeah, there's a lot that <laughs> I feel like shouldn't be drawn. Okay. I don't know. I feel like there's context for everything. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. I. You know what? Like for some I'm things, I'm like, to agree with that. You know, I mean, I'd be very. I'm very stern in this opinion. Actually, I don't think dogs in police caps should be drawn like uh, the cartoons that are out right now. But that's my own personal opinion and biases. Do I have a, is there a It's called cultural... Paw Patrol. Oh, okay. uh, it's <laughs> called Paw Patrol. You know, I, I mean, there's things like that that I don't think it should be drawn, but they go into children's books and they make sense for kids. Right. Not to me. Right. <laughs> Softening the edge of something that should remain perhaps hard and difficult. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. Um, can you think, oh, let's see, Mac just gave me so many options here. Can you, uh, oh, we're going to get to that in a second. Is there a such thing as precision when capturing an impression? Is there such a thing as precision when capturing an impression? I think that sounds that, like a Jeopardy question. I think that if one is trying to pursue that, it would be a bad idea. If someone is trying to pursue precision? Yes, with, a, with an impression, I think that Ooh. would be a bad idea. Because then it wouldn't be an impression. Hmm. I wonder how Ellsworth Kelly or Matisse would feel about that. Yeah. Be, uh, if I said summary, would, you, would that be better than impression? Or if I said translation, would that be better than impression? Or pre is precision a good thing to go after? Maybe I'll open it up. Is precision a good thing to go after in any kind of drawing? Depends on the type of artist you are. Like, Mac is asking, ask questions. Mac's work, at least whenever she was here. Let me think. You know what I mean? I can there's share Max work there's <laughs> precision there. I, I don't, I can't say I've seen her drawing, so I'm not sure, but there's precision there. So it depends on what you're drawing. But for me, I don't, I don't think about precision in almost any of my work ever. I just find that personally, precision is kind of boring. Yeah. You're throwing some serious shade towards Sakura over here. <laughs> not, not. Which I am now screen sharing. <laughs> no. Max work. I think replication, replication is boring. Maybe that's it. Not and precision. to me, the words are blurring. Okay. But so we have, a, we have a vocabulary. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But like, you could be precise about a line, and that's what I'm referring to in Max work. But well, like repetition of like hmm. exactly what we're seeing, of, yeah. I don't find super interesting. Can I um, can I make a shift in what we're being precise about? What um, Precise precision of intent. 
<clears throat> yeah. No yeah. problems there? No problems there. I yeah. feel like it's good to be precise. It's just conceptual about what integrity? You, about what you want to do, like well, about what you want to create. Or message. Barbara Kruger. I think it's possible, but I feel like it also falls away as you continue to create. So like mm -hmm. I could I could try and be precise with a drawing, but then if I take that drawing and make it a painting, things are going to change, my ideas are going to change, and what I'm working with is going to change. So I don't know. I want to segue a bit to um... Mac, please don't hate me. <laughs> Mac, no. um, I think we've been circling around some definitions of drawing, some uses of it. Um, you know, another favorite artist of this room, John Kieran, say that uh, quite sarcastically. He said that uh, drawing is a flirtation with the real. Uh, Paul Clay is another quote. Drawing is simply a line going for a walk. So, I kind of like that. I don't really know what it means. Yeah, I don't. It's cute though. Um, cute. Fred, Frederick yeah. Frank, uh, a painter and a sculptor, not as well known as the other two, says that I have learned that what I have not drawn, I have never really seen. I thought that was an interesting way to talk about what mm -hmm. drawing can do to our visual ability. Mm -hmm. right? But I'm curious, what, um, what do we think the, the, the main language of drawing is? We could talk to a photographer and we could say it's potentially, I've heard some people say it's immediacy, I've heard some people say it's light. There's the, of course, the mechanism of the camera. I've heard someone say that impression is a language of printmaking. You know, I've been thinking about this one. Yeah, we've, we've prepped for this one. Yeah. To me, I don't, I don't want to go too close to the flirtation with the real, because I don't agree with that one, but I do think drawing is like this sense of intimacy with your subject or it you know not even like a live person like whatever you're drawing whatever you're making up from your head like i feel like it's like this intimacy like between you and that and like every mark you make is there and it's gonna be there especially if you draw in like ink or something like with painting you could paint and you, if you mess something up you could go over it and do it again but with drawing it's always there and i feel like it's i don't know it's like your ideas just between you and the paper for a second or you and the board and without like going out into the world yet. There's a sense of infancy with that too. It's mm -hmm. kind of, that's interesting. Okay. So I also hear forms of protection by, by not being exposed to the harsh spot, spotlight of art world values, um, other critics leaving the studio. So how would you summarize that as drawing's main ingredient? Drawing is artistic baby food? No. I don't know. I think I still like intimacy. Intimacy? Yeah. Okay. What about you? Oh, this is really hard. I've been thinking about it for a long time and I still am not quite sure. I think immediacy is a good one for drawing, but not all drawings are immediate or fast or urgent. Mm. But I do feel like you still get um, sort of a silhouette immediately with a drawing. So I'm still sort of attached to this idea of immediacy as a language of drawing. Yeah, so I think maybe maybe it's important to just make it to define 
what actually is immediate about drawing, yeah. right? Because you can spend you can spend your entire life making one drawing, mm -hmm. conceptually speaking. Yeah. You could do that, um, and you could drop a pen on a surface, and you could call the drawing done. So it's certainly not the time spent that makes it immediate, but I think it might be the conversation that gets started between the artist and the thing the artist is making. Right. Um, whether it repeats itself often, mm -hmm. it feels like monosyllabic. It feels, uh, it feels like it's working itself out in impressions, which are quicker, perhaps like absorbed into the artistic bloodstream, maybe a little bit quicker than something that you have to write a you feel like you're writing out your thesis statement as you're making it, yeah. which I think might be the complexity of some of your paintings, right? Mm -hmm. You're having to navigate whether it's punching up or punching down. Who is, right. it, who is it making fun of? And those are, you're burning some brain calories trying to work that out. And a drawing, you might be freer and then you right. just close it up, right? work it out. Hmm. So um, I'd like to, uh, test that definition a little bit with, and also include the audience in this. So we're gonna play a little game. And the game is called, Is It a Drawing? Do I have? Oh well. Oh, I remember what I actually, <laughs> I actually really did forget uh, what I did here. I hid my game inside the packing materials. So I'm gonna open up a poll for the audience. I'm launching it now, you should all see it. I know, hi guys, hi everyone. Hello, oh my God, we have 60 people. Um, 60. So I'm showing a drawing to our guests. I'm gonna screen share the same drawing to you all. And I want you to I want you to answer, is this a drawing? I see someone has also answered question number two, but I haven't even shown question number two yet. So. <laughs> Slow down. That's, that's very fast. That's, that person <laughs> sees into the future. So as answers begin to trickle in, oh my, people are already doing question three. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> chill. Drawing or not a drawing? Drawing. Drawing? Drawing. drawing. Um, Matt, can you reach behind you and grab the other mineral no folder? No. Oh, God, I'm going to drop it. That's okay. There you go. Uh, oh, I enough. Open it up. Is this a drawing? Okay, so I'm going to bring this up on a screen share in just a second. This is this is the complicated tech stuff. I think I'm gonna. Here we go. So now, instead of a line drawing of a banana, we're looking at a photograph of a banana, or more realistically, a printout of a photograph of a banana. No. No. I'm gonna have to agree. No, on this one. Not a drawing. I think it's a photograph of a banana. Okay, so we have hit with our guests, a hard boundary. Um, I have to say, in the audience, the majority of our poll responders are saying it is still a drawing. Still a drawing. I don't know, guys. <laughs> okay. Um, question number three. Is this a drawing? No. Matt says no. It's a banana. <laughs> Full on physical in your face. No intimacy here. My definition is holding up. What's that? I said there's no intimacy here. There's no intimacy. Well, there are artistic and symbolic connotations to bananas that have been used by artists in the past that could <laughs> signify intimacy. Very true. But not in this case. Not in its organic form. 
And we've had eight people already say number four is a drawing, not knowing what it is. Uh, this one's a little. This one's a little closer. I'd say 63% of people are currently saying, "Oh, it's changing as we speak." Number three, this contention on number three. Okay. 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 Number four, last one. We've got a banana taped to a wall. Is it just a banana? I don't think it's a drawing, but that I don't think it's just a banana. You don't think it's a drawing, but you don't think it's just a banana. So what is it in addition to being a banana? I would say it's an installation piece if we okay. want to get serious about it. And we're, we're serious yeah, about it. Yeah, we're, yes, obviously. I'm yes, wearing obviously. a tie right now. <laughs> All of us are wearing ties. Yes. Emily? I agree, installation piece. Installation piece, not a drawing? Not a drawing. So I'm gonna can I can I be a pain in the butt? Of for a course. Second? Can you can you draw with tape? Yeah. Can you draw with sculptural objects? Depending. I don't think you could draw with a banana. Oh, Camera person. You could, you could draw with a banana <laughs> if if you like squeeze it out. And could draw I draw with, with Legos? Probably. Legos are a sculptural object as far as I'm concerned. Isn't that just an X? It's a drawing of an X. Mm -hmm. Blue tape and a yellow banana, just making an X, two different ingredients. I actually don't think it's a drawing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna end the poll here. So you've got, hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on a second. Hold on. The soundboard. When this song ends, I'm closing the poll. So put, cast your votes. <laughs> during the commercial break. Yeah, right, right. Uh, get to the <laughs> and then we have to get like super scared. Okay, poll's ending. Share results. Number one, pretty solid, 98%. Number two, picture, 76% say no. So that one really, yeah. that switched on me. Number three, 82% say no. I do like the comment in here that says uh, all three are trick questions. This is absolutely true. Uh, yeah. Justin's on to something. Last round. It gets a little trickier. 44% say it is, 56% say it's not. That was pretty close. So uh, I didn't have time to, uh, I, it occurred to me I wanted to make one more poll drawing, uh, one more uh, poll, which is, um, is this a conference, yes or no? And leave it up to the audience. But uh, we don't have time. That's our show. Oh. That is our show. Yeah, right. Uh, stick around for a bit. We'll open it up to some uh, live studio audience questions. Yeah. Thanks again for <laughs> Keith for inventing this whole project. For all the other faculty members. Uh, for <laughs> Chi for doing uh, you, sound Chi. and camera work. <laughs> all right. And the show is now over. I'm going to. I'm going to change the permissions here on the. Are we still on the screen? Mm -hmm. You are still on the screen. Okay. We're going to be answered. I'm going to allow people to unmute themselves <laughs> and start videos and do all that. And I'll try to turn up my mic so my guests like can hear. You asked. Make sure you turn your camera off. So uh, maybe something that I have, just because I, I, I don't want to play, I can stop playing host now, is uh, are there any drawing questions you'd like to ask us that we didn't, uh, you know, we basically solved, I think, all the philosophical, you wrote the book, basically, but if there's anything you missed, <laughs> please ask. 
Hey, can you guys hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Sorry, Miles. Listen, I've been thinking about drawing so much. First of all, okay, I love this whole thing. You do it every day. I will watch every day to indicate this thing. Um, I was wondering uh, what you guys, when, when you think you first started drawing, uh, maybe for all three of you, because John, I really miss not seeing your kid drawing. And number two, um, what your thoughts are. I've always thought like drawing is like a super democratic thing because you can do it on anything with anything. Is, is it, but then when we don't think of it as a finished piece of art, I wonder if we're undoing that. So I just wanted your thoughts about drawing in class. I'm gonna let you take that. I'm gonna see if I can find a kid drawing on my computer. So when did we start drawing? When do we think we started drawing? I started drawing really young, like, I don't know, probably whenever I could hold a pencil, like not, I don't know, that sounds cliche, but. <laughs> I well, could, it's true for a lot of us. Yeah, yeah. like That's I feel like I probably just like started doing it whenever I could because it was, you know, that and like books, there wasn't much to do. Yeah, I'd say about the same thing. But if you want to know, like when I remember drawing, I remember most distinctly drawing horses because I was a horse girl <laughs> when I was a kid and I was just obsessed. And I actually kind of became a celebrity in elementary school because I was like, the only good drawer in our elementary school class. And so I was like the girl who draws horses. Um, what was the second question again? It was like drawing in class. Drawing in class. I, f I feel like drawing is very democratic. Like I, that's why I feel like it's like an intimate thing because it's so accessible and everyone can have that moment with it. And I hate that in my brain, I deny it as like this like museum worthy art form but to me so many parts of museums and galleries and just the art world itself is so elitist anyway yeah. that I feel like I'm discrediting drawing because I don't see it in museums and I don't I can't name besides people that I know a drawer that has inspired me like an illustrator mm. other than I suppose Shel Silverstein you know what I mean? But he's not like a fine artist. He's not someone who's like in galleries. Right. People who get known for drawing are usually more known for something else. Yeah. More they're, known for painting. They're or like, more known for printmaking. Yeah. Or they're cartoonists. Right. And they, they also don't fit in this idea of like museum worthy art, which is, I don't agree with. Right. Uh, Laurie, it's your lucky day. I found um, buried in. The oh, hooray. <laughs> buried, in, buried in the JPEG of an old lecture is uh, some old drawings. Here's a here's a drawing. I I don't remember how old I was. I was a really big fan of an old Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle video game. Oh yeah. You can see April O'Neil up there at the top, um, filming the fight scene, and I was really into these. Uh, the quips that they the jokes that they would tell during the fight um so like home run gotcha and then later on uh let me show you share another one this is a, this is even earlier um running snowboarding swimming and surfing and then it turns into bombing shooting f flying and firing so we can see what kind of american upbringing i had um i'm fairly disturbed by that. <laughs> very uh Perhaps both, yeah. I loved designing uh, planes. I would I designed planes that would fire, um, that would shoot um, saw blades. At them. So that's all you need to know about my my uh, American. You, I have never been happier, John. I don't know if I've ever been happier in my whole life. <laughs> the three of your drawings. That was awesome. Thanks, you guys. Oh yeah, we need to show them these. Oh yeah, uh, Chi, can I um, put you on camera duty for a second to do a, a, walk, a walking camera close-up close for to the some of our, our new masterpieces, which with this one. should we donate these to the one? DePaul collection and have uh, Christy hate us? Oh, What'd you say? I think we should donate these to DePaul and see, uh, yeah. just so they have to tell, tell me no. Yeah, just so they have Grab to keep it, it forever in the basement. close to the drawing. Yeah. Beautiful. I had like an 
I thought smudging mine was going to make it better, and it did not do that. Arguably the best one out of the group, though. At least you used the whole thing. No. Oh, Skip's got a hand up. Sorry, Skip, I missed that. It's OK. Um, I have a question for everyone. Uh, does your handwriting resemble your line making in your drawings? Mm, interesting. I would say definitely yes. My handwriting is really sloppy in it. But I also write in all caps. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Skip, for me, I don't think that there's too much of a visual relationship. I think it's more of a personality thing for I... me. I, uh, I tend to be a very careful handwriter. And that, if I'm going to psychoanalyze myself for a second, I think it has more to do with the con attempted control. But when I'm drawing, it is drawing to me is an activity of loosening up and writing to me is an, an, is an activity of delineating something very specific. So opposite sides of the brain for me. Mm. How are you, Emily? Um, I mean, I guess you could draw some um, similarities. Uh, my handwriting is pretty small and loopy and tight. And I feel like, sure, yeah, my drawing says that. Yeah, I agree. I've got a question here in the, uh, in the chat. Where does digital drawing, such as Claire Ashley's Oculus artwork, when does it become digital sculpture or kinetic sculpture? That's a hard question. In using Cosmoculus as an example, I would say for people who have seen it, um, which you should, yeah, if you're here, you should. Um, there's a, I think it's a 17. There's a piece of a cell phone hanging on the wall draped in other pieces of, I guess, like plastic material. It's a full art piece together, but the the video on the screen is just solid and it like it's moving in its own space, but you don't move with it. And I would say that is still a drawing, but then if you like walked over to her VR and you put that on and you could actually move within it, I would say that it thus like transforms it into a kinetic sculpture. Okay. Yeah. Okay. To me. Yeah. I, I almost don't want to like say strictly one way or another, quite honestly. Yeah. Um, maybe, I don't know. You're leaving it undecided. I'm, I think I'm going to leave this That's one That's a hard undecided. pass, Emily. You're just like. I know. I know. But <laughs> I think that, that VR and these virtual um, artworks will obviously show up more and more mm -hmm. so i think i'm gonna wait until mm -hmm. come back in five years yeah yeah i <laughs> come back in five okay. years and ask me the same <laughs> question again uh see a hand up keith hey y'all um can you hear me okay i can't yeah. yes good. okay good um just want to thank you all for for participating and doing this and this is uh definitely beyond any expectations and anything I had envisioned regarding the conference. So I'm, I'm really so excited and, and we could, you know, evidence is there in the, the chat as well that it has truly been amazing and beneficial to, to experience this. And uh, before I forget, you know, for the other audience members that was a few, there's like about five more um, conference iterations that are occurring each month. You can go to the website, drawnoutconference.com and check out the schedule. But next up is uh, Heather Brand, who is an early career faculty member also. I think primarily photography, um, Allegheny College. I might be pronouncing that wrong. I don't know. Allegheny, is good. Allegheny yeah. So so I don't know how, how no, this is going right. to... Yeah, I, I don't know how this is going to transform going to the next round and so on and so forth. But um, please make sure you, you tune in. I did have a question, though. Um, regarding the conversation about drawing and the idea of, of drawing being something that is sort of like the discussion of it being democratic and sort of liberating and the sense of freedom and it's low stakes and it's not precious. But at the same time, can you all speak to some moments that it has been utterly frustrating? Uh, so kind of like the flip side of, of that. 
Uh, yeah, so the reason why I don't sketch uh, on a piece of paper like before I paint is because I find myself a lot of the time I sketch exactly what I want to see. And if I can't recreate that on the canvas, yeah, it just like makes a whole painting just a flop, like 100% a flop. Um, so I'll write before, I'll write what I have inside of my head before I sketch onto the canvas, which is a form of sketching in and of itself. But I feel similarly like, I, I've never felt frustrated by a drawing itself, but I'll draw like what I want a sculpture to look like. And then I'll try and turn that into something. And then I'll get pissed off because I'm like, oh my God, I drew this and it looks great. And then I'm like, right now I'm trying to build a cabinet and I drew it and it was so easy because it's just like a box on paper. And I'm, then I'm pretty surprised to hear you say that you've never been upset at a drawing. Not a drawing because like I've been saying, like there's no pressure on it. Sure. So I don't well, I don't really get pissed off at drawings. It's what it becomes. Then I start getting mad. I get mad at drawings all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I want every drawing to be good. I want every yeah. drawing to be better than the last drawing I made. I can't quite I'm maybe not as skilled at as, as escaping that uh, I don't know, arena, I suppose. Um, but it is it is a game it I can adjust it a little bit I think Keith to your question like um I may be I don't know that I drawing is entirely democratic I mean some contexts of drawing are democratic but I think it's it's definitions are some of the most flexible so mm -hmm. if if I keep hitting my head against the same thing not working out such as realism let's say making a figure doing a doing a portrait doing even a self-portrait it needs to look like me. It needs to look like me. Well, then if I, I might have to change that expectation in order for the drawing to be good. And, or, you know, I may not have enough years left in my life to become as good as that expectation needed me to be before I started to like it. So it's this, sometimes I have to move the goalpost in order for something to not frustrate me to the point of stasis. I guess I just want to add maybe one more thing to that question is, um, and this is something I try to tell my students is, most of us don't have the time to get good at everything. So one of the conceptual decisions we have to make as artists, so for most of us, it's a conceptual decision. For some, it's just impulse. For some, it's just what we get handed or some or what we can afford sometimes. But um, you know, we we have to narrow down that list yeah. from everything to some things. Drawing is good at uh, helping us narrow it down. Yeah. Too. Well, it's uh, six fifty-six. It's wow. a good place to. Uh, I think we started pretty much on time, so <laughs> I don't want to keep everyone too long. This isn't as exciting as Squid Games, but hopefully just as entertaining. Um, Keith, are we good? to uh, wrap it up we are good thank you all so much okay. awesome job thank you keith thanks thank everyone you. for coming out thank you please make sure to uh tune into the other uh conference talks i know we will be so yep. um say uh goodbye and good night goodbye good night drive safe you got a, you got a sound effect for the goodbye oh yes yes <laughs> we've got an outro yeah yeah and then we waddle off the screen yeah it's the same thing just a little longer See ya. See you, Keith. Bye. Talk to you later.